This series of videos has been filmed in an ATF16949 certified supplier who is involved in the manufacture of a wide range of rivets used for automotive and non-automotive applications. They also design and manufacture equipment used in rivet insertion. The video shows extracts of simulated ATF16949 audits focus on the organization's quality management system processes. Watch this video and see if the auditor is undertaking the audit effectively. As always, we welcome feedback and comments. So I want to follow up then uh, on what we looked at on machine number 24. Uh, I think you said for every tote bin, you take five samples Correct. and you do SPC, which matches the control plan. Yeah. Can we have a look at the SPC data and maybe using the rivet, can you show me what are you measuring on the rivet? Yeah, sure. So uh, this is a, a SPC uh, chart of all the different geometries that we're going to be measuring uh, and any special characteristics in particular that might right. be uh, required by a yeah. customer. So uh, we've got parallelism. Parallelism, yeah. Uh, on, on these charts, we have an upper and lower control limit, okay. uh, which the graph shows that we're trying to maintain within those limits. Yeah. If we were to go outside those limits, the machine would be attended to straight away, product right. stopped and uh, contained. Okay, um, so pa parallelism. The second one, what's that's that? The overall length. So that's the overall length of the rivet from the... Uh, okay. The, meeting the customer specification. Head okay. diameter, again, that's the uh, outside circumference head diameter. So that's this one part. here, yeah? It is, yeah. Okay, um, and this one? Web thickness, again, is uh, an internal geometry of the part, uh, the thickness of the head. Uh, that's measured on one of these gauges as well. Um, head thickness is also measured uh, using some of the calibrated gauges we've got there and the head to shank concentricity is also measured on there. And we've got three different stations for carrying out all the SPC work because of the amount of machines that we have. Right. Um, so uh, everyone's not huddled around one area. We, we cater for the amount of machines and product that we're doing with all this calibrated equipment. Right, and in terms of the tolerance for these, uh, the control plan references, this is on the inspection data drawing. Yeah. Where would I find the drawing? So the drawing was, uh, when we were looking earlier, within the forging man pack. Oh, and the, okay. The, the drawing dimensions are in that man pack. Right, okay. I just want to go and do a, a verification of the tolerances against these six parameters then. So we have uh, uh, what we call an HCS number on these gauges. So let's uh, pick an example. One that's easy to pick up is this one. So we have a, a serial number. So there. HCS1526. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, maybe the micrometer. Oh, sorry, the due date. It's yeah. got a uh, calibrated November 2023 and due date November 2024. Okay. So I'll check that when we go to the lab. Yeah. How about the, the micrometer? micrometer? Is that easy to see? Again, yeah. Uh, we've got a label on the back. So we have an HCS number for that one. 1638. Uh, 1638. And that yeah. is uh, due for calibration in March this yeah. year. Okay. Yeah, so I will link back to the drawing to refer to the, the specifications yeah. on that. Um, I don't see any special causes from the run charts that we... That, we have here against the control limits. That might not be for this particular customer's product. There are only right. certain customers who have special characteristics. Right, okay. We'll look on the drawing then yeah. for that. And that's also recorded within the control plan. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. As we saw in the previous video, the auditor is auditing the rivet forging process and identified by use of the control plan that SPC was being used to control the process. He follows the audit trail to the SPC station to verify the SPC controls. The auditee explains that five samples are taken and different product features are checked according to the control plan. In undertaking any audit, 
Auditors can use observation to gather objective evidence. They don't always need to be asking questions. There was the opportunity in this part of the audit for the auditor to verify the control over any designated special characteristics and also challenge the auditee on their understanding of basic statistical concepts. For example, how they know whether the process is stable or has special clauses and then what reaction plan would be instigated if special causes are identified. This relates to IETF 16949 requirement 9.1.1.3 application of statistical concepts and this states statistical concepts such as variation, control, process capability and the consequences of over adjustment shall be understood and used by employees involved in the collection, analysis and management of statistical data. Some statistical software will have rules of inter interpretation built within it. For example, points outside of control, seven points consistently increasing, decreasing, etc. It should be verified the rules comply with any customer or organization specified reference manuals. And if there is a rule violation, the reaction plan is clearly defined, clearly understood and implemented. Finally, the auditor has the opportunity to follow audit trails to verify that the measurement equipment used in the SPC station is calibrated and that any measurement system analysis has been undertaken for each type of measurement system specified in the control plan.